Rattenborough here, delivering the final installment of our exciting Habitats adventure. We have traveled all around the world looking at some of the different habitats where plants and animals live. A lot of these habitats, such as the Arctic and the Sonoran Desert, have climates to which you and I would have a tough time adapting. As we've seen, however, there are different living things in each habitat we have visited. Because some living things are so well adapted to the specific conditions of their specific habitats, any large change in their surroundings could make it hard for them to survive. Just think what would happen if it got even a little colder in the desert. Some of those animals who are so good at keeping cool wouldn't know how to stay warm. Or what if it stopped raining in the rainforest? What would happen to all of those plants that need lots of water? Or what if something happened to disrupt the food chain of a certain animal? If that animal relied on a certain type of plant or animal to eat, and that food source was taken out of the habitat, that animal would no longer have the food it needs to survive. Sometimes habitats change because the temperature or the weather changes, but unfortunately people often affect habitats as well. Whether they realize it or not, people can make it very difficult for plants and animals to survive. From cutting down trees or starting forest fires to dumping dangerous waste and chemicals into our rivers, people's actions can endanger lots of species of plants and animals. To endanger plants and animals means to put them in a dangerous situation. So people's actions can harm or even kill lots of plants and animals. Sometimes people's actions destroy entire habitats. To destroy something means to completely ruin it. For example, someone walking in a forest might light a match and drop it, and then the whole forest might burn. Even if they were not harmed by the fire itself, many animals that used to live in trees would no longer have a place to live. When they lose their homes, animals find it much harder to continue to live in a particular habitat. If they can't find new places to live, the animals will not survive. After a while, there will be fewer and fewer of these kinds of animals alive in the world. When that happens, we say that they have become an endangered species. A species is a group of living things that have similar characteristics. So an endangered species is a group of living things that could die out completely. We say these species are endangered for a very good reason. They are in danger of extinction. Extinction means the end of a species because all of its members have died. An animal or plant that is extinct has died out and does not exist anywhere in the world anymore. I'm on a mission to tell you about one animal that can teach us a lot about endangered species and how to save them. I have come here to Washington State in the northwestern part of the United States to show you an amazing bird called a bald eagle. Look up at that tree there and you will see one of these eagles perched on the very top branch. You may recognize the bald eagle because it is one of the national symbols of our country. Drawings of the eagle appear as a symbol on American money and many other places. Believe it or not, the bald eagle was almost extinct in the United States several years ago. If that had happened, there would be no bald eagles still living. So we're grateful to be able to spot this bald eagle today. Bald eagles are scavengers, but they also eat rats and other small animals, so I'd better stay out of the way. I think that the bald eagle looks very grand, don't you? This statement means that the bald eagle looks impressive or is admired because of its size and importance. It is covered with dark brown feathers, and its head and tail are both white. Bald eagles are some of the largest birds living in this country. They can grow up to three feet tall, which is almost as tall as a first grader. Wow, this one has just taken off into the air, and you can see that it has huge wings. In fact, their wings can spread to about eight feet in length. 
While this eagle is flying around, let me tell you more about these special birds. There used to be thousands of bald eagles in the United States, but farmers started to hunt them because they thought the eagles were killing their farm animals. Then later, people started to cut down the trees in which bald eagles build their nests to make ways for roads, houses, and shopping malls. With fewer places for them to make their homes, eagles found it harder and harder to survive, and they started to die out. Soon there weren't very many bald eagles left in the whole United States. People started to notice that there were fewer and fewer bald eagles, and they decided to find out why. Scientists began to study the eagles, and they discovered two things. When scientists discover things, they learn new information. The first thing that they discovered was that a lot of eagles didn't have enough room to build their nests. Eagles do not like to live in the same area as other eagles, so they built their nests far away from each other. They like places that are very peaceful, and they need huge, strong trees that can hold nests big enough for the adults and their babies to live. The scientists discovered that the eagles didn't have enough room in the areas where they had been living because people were chopping down trees in order to build more roads and buildings. People were destroying the bald eagle's habitat. The other thing that scientists found out was that something bad was getting into the bald eagle's food supply. Farmers sometimes use chemicals to keep bugs from eating their crops. One chemical, though, made the eggs that the bald eagles laid much thinner and easier to break. Because of this, many eagle eggs were breaking before they could hatch. No one knew before then that the chemical was hurting the eagles, but it was. Luckily, the scientists found out which chemical was harming the eagles' eggs. Using the scientists' information, the United States government made laws to protect the bald eagle and its habitat. So that the eagle's food no longer contained the harmful chemical, thanks to these laws, more eagles were born, and the number of eagles started to rise again. Now, bald eagles have made an amazing comeback, but people must always be careful to protect their habitat. This bald eagle has returned to its nest up in the tree. Maybe it has some chicks up there that need to be fed. Or maybe it's just trying to keep warm. It is pretty chilly. And speaking of returning to the nest, I'm afraid it's time for me to go home now. I've really enjoyed our trip around the world's habitats, and I hope that you have too. Mrs. Rattenborough and my kids miss me, and to tell the truth, it's been a dangerous expedition for me. I'll be glad to get out of danger and into the safety of my lovely home under the steps. Home sweet home, or maybe I should say, habitat sweet habitat.